Levi Jiru, welcome to the big interview. I have many magical powers, but I'm no good with traffic. You've just sweated through horrendous Milan traffic from Como to this um, 17th century palace. <laughs> I bet you're thinking right now, this better be worth it. Huh? This, these questions better be good. Yeah, I hope so. That's what you're thinking <laughs> right now. Yeah. We're here to talk about, I suppose, not only your fantastic life and career, but the fact that your autobiography, Always mm -hmm. Believe, is, is published in English. Mm -hmm. When, when, I, when I look at it, I, they've only given me some pages. My, my publishers have, have read all of it. They, they talk about the slightly... You, you, the first Always Believe moment that I want to talk about is Grenoble. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that yeah. okay for pronunciation? Yeah, Grenoble. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, good. Grenoble. In your book, which footballers don't often do, you reveal that you began to earn... Two and a half thousand euros per month. Yeah, something like that. The people who are listening are going, oh, a footballer earning a normal man's wage. That's really <laughs> nice. But at the time, it must have felt fantastic. Yeah. I live in Barcelona. Xavi Hernandez once told me the first salary he ever got, mm -hmm. the equivalent of Grenoble, mm -hmm. the first thing he did was he bought a toaster to toast bread for his mum. Yeah. When you were on 2,500 a month the first time, which must have made you feel like a millionaire, yeah, yeah. what's the first nice thing you did for somebody else? Well, uh, first uh, of all, uh, I was uh, a student because uh, when I signed professional at uh, Grenoble, uh, I was uh, 19. And uh, it's funny because um, I wanted uh, still to study at university. Uh, so, yeah. For me, it was uh, incredible, and uh, with this salary, uh, I could have buy my first uh, car uh, for myself, and then uh, become more independent. I um, I just passed my driving uh, test, uh, driving license at 19, so it was the perfect timing. First time. First time. First time. So. Um, yeah, I was uh, I was very happy, and uh, obviously, um, in the future, when I when I get to earn uh, more money. I, I bought some um, nice present for my family, but for 2,500 uh, 2, a month, uh, I also try to put um, as much as money uh, uh, I could on the side to buy uh, my first flat also, to invest uh, my money because uh, I've been raised uh, like that to think about uh, the future and to be, um, to be intelligent in uh, in how to to invest your money, alors, uh, so um, I was going to speak. Alors, alors, I was going to say alors. 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 Say alors. Ah, alors. <laughs> so yeah, I um, I bought uh, my first car. Was uh, I can't say the, the name. Of course, the you can't say yeah. anything. A, a, a small uh, Polo Volkswagen. Really it cool. Was, it was not a Lamborghini or Ferrari, <laughs> 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 but was I was so happy. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, after um, you know, uh, I um, I was I, I, I was so happy because uh, I could uh, I could do something else also uh, at the university to meet some different people from uh, different um, um, like oh, um, like d different um, horizon. You know, like different... Uh, different horizons, yeah, different yeah, backgrounds. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Different types of Yes, course, yes. On and uh, to, op to, like, have an open mind, you know. Ah, that was e that even... Because here we are, a Frenchman in Italy talking to a Scotsman in Italy, yeah. and we can share some words in France. So even back then in Grenoble, yeah. finding people of different patterns, yeah, different yeah, backgrounds, yeah, was that's already it. important to you? Yeah, for me, Why? yeah. Yeah, f uh, to in order to socialize, you know, to uh, to I mean, I mean that's a, that's a life, you know, to socialize with people, to meet different people from different background, you know. So you didn't spend any of the money on skiing gear. Uh, well, uh, I was uh, yeah, I grew up on ski uh, because uh, I come from the mountains. I was uh, born in Chambéry. Um, and I grew up in Grenoble, so like basically 30 minutes from the skiing station. I miss it so much. That's the first thing I'm uh, gonna do after the career. But yeah, I, I've done a lot of skiing uh, until 15, 16, and after I, I didn't have time, and and also it was a bit risky, you know, 
in a contract in my first uh, professional contract. No yeah, no, it's. Did did football rob France of maybe some Winter Olympic medals? Maybe. S say again. Did football mm -hmm. rob France of some Winter Olympic medals? If you didn't become ah, a footballer, maybe, maybe I don't know. Uh, no, I, I was not uh, as good. Uh, uh, because, you know, I was going only on holidays, you know, a bit of skiing, enjoying, just like as my second passion, but my first one was definitely football. Always. Always. Forgive me skipping around, but I like always believe moments. Mm -hmm. Always believe is your, is your my motto. motto. But also it's the title of your book in French. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you say the, the title in Toujours y croire. Toujours y croire. Y croire. Always believe in it. Yes, yes, moi. yes. An always believe moment for me is, uh, it's a big jump already, so I apologize, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no you've problem. done a lot, so yeah, what yeah, am yeah. I going to do? In let's go, let's go. Montpellier. Yeah. Montpellier, apparently, there was some prospect of you joining Celtic, so yeah. mm -hmm. thank God that didn't happen. Because <laughs> you I'm are Aberdeen, Aberdeen. Rangers. Aber no, no, Aberdeen, no I, I hate both the ugly sisters of Glasgow. <laughs> Only one club has two European stars in Scotland, ah, it? it's Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Okay. So unless you were about to join Aberdeen, I'm happy about Montpellier. And quite quickly, you win the title. Mm -hmm. Now, it was Montpellier's first ever title, mm -hmm. and I think you won it for them. And I want to see if you can remember the most incredible game, which is Montpellier Lille. against Evian. Evian. And it's Montpellier against Evian. There are four goals. Mm -hmm. There are about 26 red cards. It's completely crazy. You score, you don't take the final... I'm interrupting, eh? Yeah. How is your memory? How, how much can you describe to the people who are trying to follow this? What was the situation about match mm -hmm, 34? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was basically uh, four or five games before the, the end of the season. We were in a good position. We needed uh, a win to stay in a title race with uh, PSG. Um, yeah, and, and this, this, this game was a bit special because, as you said, um, maybe a tension, maybe the fear to to, to, to miss uh, the, the, um, the opportunity to stick to PSG and to fight till the end. And uh, well, uh, we had this penalty um, and uh, at this time I did share the penalty uh, um, shot uh, with uh, Younes Belanda. But it's the, the first penalty comes in minutes 42 and Younes Belanda Mm -hmm. Fantastic, talented mm -hmm. footballer mm -hmm. takes it with mm -hmm. not a panenka, but like just mm -hmm. so arrogant, yeah. saying to the goalkeeper, "Look what I'm going to do," and then it trickles into the corner, right? Mm -hmm. Like an insult to the goalkeeper. And Stefan Anderson almost knocked your head off to to create the first penalty, right? or don't you remember that? No. Stefan, the penalty comes, I think, when. Stefan Anderson, the goalkeeper, comes up and he knocks you flat with his elbow. Ah, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't remember that. I mean, yeah, because you, you, you remind me, yeah, okay. Um, but Younes took it and uh, it, uh, he basically scored, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous yeah. penalty, so yeah. clever. Yeah, and the second one? Then Callum Berg and Betty Go score mm -hmm. for Evian. Mm -hmm. You're playing on the Tuesday. Mm -hmm. This is a chance to go eight points clear of PSG. Then the equalizing eight, eight goal. Eight points? Yeah, because they didn't play until ah, okay. Uh, okay. Thursday. Okay. In the 84th minute, do you remember how you equalize? Um. It's so clever. The ball is in the air. You challenge with the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. You come down, you get in front, you stay just on side. And Suleiman Kamara, flicks it to you and you yes. flick it to Suleiman and Suleiman back to you yeah. and everybody's screaming for offside. Yeah. <laughs> was the, it? The te it was offside, yeah. yeah. The tension is building. It's absolutely crazy. And then there's a penalty in minute 90. Yeah. So it was to win the game. And, uh, um, well, uh, I was supposed to, uh, to take the penalty, but Sule, Kamara... Uh, I uh, say, uh, I feel it, I can, uh, uh, I, I, basically he took the ball first, you know, and um, 
that was a bit of uh, weird, like a strange atmosphere, hesitation uh, for me to tell him, look, uh, Soule, uh, usually I take it, or Younes take it. Younes took the first one. So I'm not the man who's going to say, look, it's my turn. Uh, I, I don't want another penalty gate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, I, I just trust him. Uh, he scored a few penalties also, so just took the the penalty. And but we have to have sympathy for him because while he's waiting to take the penalty, yeah, it was so long. A fight breaks out. Yeah, 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 yeah. A fight between yeah and Mongongu yeah and Younes and Younes. Yeah. <laughs> the referee gives two red cards, yeah. and then <laughs> I have to say it was a bit of a mess, if I can say. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, um, I think they they created also a, a, a strange atmosphere to maybe deconcentrate de de uh, Soule uh, for taking the penalty last minute. It's not very easy, but I, I, I trusted him. We all trusted him uh, that he could um, he could put it back on the net. Unfortunately, you know, uh, sometimes. Uh, it happened. It happened, and uh, it was uh, yeah. It was disappointed. For six minutes of waiting. Yeah, six and then minutes is he huge. Takes it and Anderson makes a fantastic save. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's the day when maybe some of the Montpellier fans yeah they were stop believing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's PSG. Yeah, but of but Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, the first year of the Qatari. Um, um, owners at PSG, they are the strong team, I remember. Uh, but we were still, uh, what, uh, two points? Uh, three points ahead. Three points ahead after this game. And but it's true that we could have felt that we, we missed the chance to create a bigger gap and maybe to keep this um, advantage till the end. And it was a bit of confusion, you know, in our head. So what happened from then onwards? Because is La Mousson, the, the Montpellier mm -hmm, Stadium, mm -hmm, is, is, mm -hmm. it, is it noisy, is it crazy? Yeah. It is? Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. They are very passionate fans. Um, they called, um, it, it's called like the, La Mousson, the, the stadium is like in a, in, a, in the area called La Payade. Uh, yeah, they sing, uh, they sing all day, all day long, you know, the, the the song about uh, ici c'est la paillade uh, no no they this they, is I the think, paillade yeah this ici is the paillade. La paillade yes and they they are very proud they are very like passionate and they I, I think they they still believe that we could do it but it's true that uh, this situation the day after was a bit uh, heavy heavy to to deal with because, um, well, uh, we, uh, we we lost uh, Unes for a few games. Uh, we missed a good chance, and uh, we needed to to stay positive and to to go forward. What did you do in your mind then? Because we can spoil it for everybody. Mm -hmm. Montpellier mm -hmm. win in the end. Yeah. It's beautiful because each game you keep the three point gap on yeah. on PSG yeah. until the end. Mm -hmm. It means the title is alive until the last day. Mm. How did you organize your mind? How did, did you try to... Always believe is the theme. Yeah. So you always believe, but did you try to share, inspire? Yes, sure, sure. We needed uh, to have a clarification, if I can say, like to, to speak about that the day after. Um, I had a, a little conversation with Younes regarding the penalty because he was a bit upset that I didn't take it. I explained him the situation and, well, uh, that was the first time I had to say, uh, look, keep calm, keep uh, the serenity and the confidence. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you we we're going to make it. But it's not because, you know, you face the first difficulty that um, you have to you have to, to become nervous. And uh, yeah, it was the first time maybe uh, I could use this, this sentence, my motto sentence, you know, um, I always believe because we didn't want to, to split and to, to have confusion in the, dress, in the dressing room because of that. Uh, we wanted to stick together and uh, just have compassion uh, like for, for Soule who missed the penalty. 
what was the atmosphere? In, because to win the first title in the history of Montpellier is big. Mad. To do it to keep by, by keeping PSG with or without Qatari money is mm -hmm. fucking gigantic. Yes. So when you're in the street, when you're in the butchers, when you're in the <laughs> post office, when your wife's friends are talking to her, what the atmosphere must have been a mixture between electric hope and, and fear yeah. and disbelief. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a very, very exciting uh, situation. Um, all the fans uh, turned crazy when uh, when we won the league. I mean, it, the, the, the most um, incredible game was uh, the last game at La Mosson in Montpellier against Lille. This one, you could have uh, felt the stadium like, uh, wow, um, I don't know. Like moving. Moving, moving, because it was... Uh, it was I almost have a goosebumps right now. You know, I um, we just scored. Um, I assist uh, Karim Aitfana at the last minute, and um, it was the, the, the goal of the victory. And uh, it means that the last game away in Auxerre, who played, uh, we didn't play anything because they were already in the League Two, um, would be the game uh, for us to become a champion. And so we keep that gap, as you said, of three points and. I have amazing memories, and all the the Montpellier fans I cross in the road, you know, and they they remember this game, this moment when I took the ball from the halfway line. I drove, I drove it. I was I was like running, running towards the goal, but um, the defender. I was like I, I was having a duel with the defender, and I was a bit on the side and. I succeed to keep the ball and after to take a look and, and, and just pass it from the outside, the left outside foot to Karim who, who did believe him, him also, he did believe that I could, I could go until the box, until the goal kick line and just like flick it to him and just had to push the back of the net and well, the, the stadium basically explodes. Who is there for you? you what, Jennifer is there, but not your parents. Well, I don't yes, suppose. yes, yes, yes. My um, no, Jennifer was there, and obviously all my friends. And um, it yeah, was a was a was a big, 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 uh, big win, big moment, you know. And uh, after that game, I remember also the party in the club, and uh, it was crazy. We were in our head, uh, no disrespect for Auxerre, but. We were, were relieved, relieved that we, because it was a big game. Lille, uh, Lille just beat, I think, we draw against uh, at home against two, three games before against uh, PSG, PSG, and uh, they were doing well also. And and well, uh, it was a big game to win. You know, we we knew that if we win that game, we would have a big opportunity to win. You the could league. never say it then, but in your heart, you felt like win against Lille and we're champions. Yes, you yes. couldn't say it then no, for no, disrespect. No, no. Yeah. But that night yeah, in the yeah. party, yeah. you felt like champions. Because if we didn't win it, we didn't. Uh, we're not going to have our destiny in our hands. I mean, um, you never know if you draw in Auxerre. Uh, okay, we still had. No, we still had, but. If we draw and uh, and uh, and PSG win, you know we disaster. We, uh, disaster because all the hope we had the uh, the last weeks, the last months, it was crazy. It's cool to see you smiling at the memories. Yeah, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah? It's nice to have goosebumps afterwards. Yeah, the memories that last no. and they come back to you and you're, oh, yeah, great. It's feeling. beautiful. Always believe. Always believe has a different meaning too uh, for everybody. Always believe can have lots of meanings, but for you. You always talk about your faith, mm -hmm. and so I'm a strong believer too. Mm -hmm. But I'm always interested in how people think they use that. Mm -hmm. When you pray, mm -hmm. one, to, to, have you prayed for, for victory? I suppose. Yes. Okay. Because sometimes you have to be careful what you ask for. I think you have Why? to use your judgment about maybe it's good to pray for others. For sure, but yeah. I do also. I do also. How do you I handle think, that conversation? I think, I think uh, it has to be very simple to pray. You know, uh, first of all, um, I um, I 
did want uh, to put um, the word believe in uh, the title book because um, there is this, um, this reference to uh, my faith and also because my um, career was not um, a long fleuve tranquil. It's a proper French expression. I don't know if you know how is, uh, what does that mean. Um, it means that you have to go through so many difficulties and when things doesn't go in a, in, a, in a good way, the way you would like to, you always have to uh, show um, a big, strong, strong mental strength, I mean, um, strong mentality to keep the, the head up and to be always positive. And uh, obviously, when I, when, I, when I talk about my faith, I talk about it because uh, it's important for me to, to tell that I'm a Christian, that I believe in God, and all the things he's done, he's done for me, you know, and my family. And I strongly believe that um, he, um, the the human the human people like they 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 draw their path, okay? They make their path, but that's the Lord who um, set the pace, okay? And and for me, I believe in destiny, like and um, I, I believe that I was. Like, like God planned for me to become a footballer, a, a professional football player. And um, that's why, you know, uh, I, I'm very thankful about doing what I like every single day, you know, to live from my passion. And when I pray, I just have in my, in my head um, like four, four things, like um, it, it, it's act, it's like adoration, um, confession, thank, thanksgiving, thankful, and, um, and supplication. Uh, so I always try to think uh, acts. I, I always try to think about that when I, when I pray, to not forget some stuff, but you can have also very simple prayer, like, um, for example, to ask, the Lord to help you to score a goal or to win a game. It can be, I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I pray every single moment of the, of the journey, of the, of the day. I, I don't have to be in a church to pray. Yeah. I, I believe you, if you have um, a, a, a nice um, relationship with, uh, with God and like very natural, very simple, keep it simple and, and, and short, uh, you can pray even in a hotel room, uh, in, uh, in your car, uh, for, for you, but for the others also. Um, I'm someone very, uh, if I can say generous, and I, I always, um, I'm an altruist. Altruist is right. Altruistic. Yeah? Altruistic. You, you care yeah, for the about good of others. others. Yeah, that's it. And uh, I think um, in my game also, you can see it. I always yeah, have been. I uh, like it. I always, uh, Kareem would say yes right now after that story because you gave Kareem the lovely altruistic assist for yeah. the goal against Lille. And um, yeah, obviously, uh, yeah, for me it's very important to to pray not for only for you but um, the others who, who need it because um, so many people needs um, needs help. I'm not sure if what we've been talking about is always easy to talk about in a dressing room and so on, but because you're a bright guy. I want to take the other side of it because it's famous from, I suppose, anybody who followed your career, but also it's in Always Believe that Mesha Bazdarevic mm -hmm. at Grenoble made a big mistake, which he said sorry for, Can happen. but he told you, no, it's not going to happen, you're not good enough. And in the book, which people are going mm -hmm. to buy and mm -hmm. read, mm -hmm. there's a very good passage because... Four years later, you you say, in a match between Montpellier, where I'm playing, and Bazdarevich's new club, so show, I get my chance. Raring to go and with fire in my belly, I'm not going to rest until I've proven to him that he made a huge <laughs> mistake. I power my team to the top of the league table by scoring a hat-trick. In the post-match interview, Bazdarevich sums it up in one sentence. Giroud is un joueur exceptionnel. <laughs> so, 
I like the blend between you, you pray, you have discussions, mm -hmm. you ask mm -hmm. for things, mm -hmm. but also when you think there is destiny. Mm -hmm. But also you're somebody who clearly believes in taking destiny also in his own yeah. hands, actions. And revenge is a theme which anybody who says that revenge doesn't exist is a liar. <laughs> but also we're not supposed to think about revenge, yeah? So I think uh, this is a complex subject. No, I think it's not about revenge, you know. If if I would have think about revenge, uh, I would not be in peace with my mind, with my spirit, you know, and uh, maybe I would, wouldn't would play so well with a hat-trick. I, I felt like very calm and, and confident about the game and the possibility to show Mesha Bazdarevich wrong uh, um, according, uh, regarding what he did think um, a few years ago. The only thing is I have no, no, no anger. I, I was not angry against, uh, against him because one of the um, important things also uh, when you are a Christian is to forgive. And at that time, I have to say that when I was young, when I was, I was not even 20, but 19, 20, and I asked him to let me go on loan to improve. Um, he said um, he didn't want first because he, he wanted to keep me to play, you know, uh, as a sub, uh, to play some part of the game, but not in the starting 11. And I told him, um, look, uh, I need to play, so it was okay. And after, the year after, Grenoble uh, went up in Ligue 1. Um, at that time, Grenoble was in Ligue 2. Um, I've been uh, to play in East in uh, third division to improve on loan and to play and to score goals. And after, so in the meantime, Grenoble went up in Ligue 1. And when I came back, I said to the manager to... Um, Misha Bazdarevich, I don't want to stay because I know that I'm not going to play and I need to carry on, you know, mm -hmm. my, 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 um, my improvement um, in, uh, in League 2, basically. And he didn't understand that and uh, it was um, a bit tough when, when, when he did say, like, why, you don't, why, why do you want to go in League 2? You don't have the level of the League 2. And, yeah. That's, that's a bit harsh, you know, at that time when you are 19 or 20 years old to, to, to listen, you know, to, to, hear. to hear, sorry. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, was tough, but I, I, I didn't have any, um, like, animosity or whatever against him. Then you're a special person, no? That's, yes. That's, forgiving is, is difficult. And it's difficult, but I, I think, one more time, uh, the Lord uh, make it happen. You know, that, that answer was the best one, four, <laughs> ye four years after. He said, yeah. okay, hat trick okay. today. Hat trick today. <laughs> then he's a, lovely, he's a very loving but God. We, we, are, we are agree that I pray for the Lord to, to help me, mm. but it's true that I am, uh, sorry, I am the um, I am the um, the main character of my yeah. life. I drive myself, and uh, and he, as I said before, I do my path, and he set the pace. I've been a little bit cruel by asking such difficult questions mm -hmm. so early, so I'm sorry. No, no problem. And now we change the pace. Yeah, yeah. We have sponsors, and these are simpler. These are quicker. These are the Bet365 asked us as, as our sponsors. What's the toughest defender you've ever been up against? Maybe the guy you're like, oh no, not this guy again. Or the guy you could, no matter what you did, you couldn't get free of him. Uh, I believe it was always tough to play uh, against Laurent, Laurent Koscielny. I was going to say in French, Laurent Koscielny. Um, especially because I played uh, every day uh, more, uh, at Arsenal. Um, he, he knew me very well also, so it was a bit, uh, a bit more easier for him. But yeah, after, uh, I have to say, I had very tough, good duels with uh, Virgil van Dijk uh, when we play um, Chelsea, Liverpool. And uh, yeah, he's one of the best, I think, um, 
And uh, but I can say that I scored a few goals against Liverpool when he did play. So I have nice pictures also. Uh, um, my friend sent me uh, duels with him, and uh, yeah, funny pictures I'll show you after. Are you a are you a physical? Yeah, yeah. We were we were doing physical duel, and uh, I just chased the ball and him like falling down like that but it was maybe one time out of ten you know I won the, the duel but it was spot on and it's a funny picture. He's a fellow guest on this series he's a bright interesting guy I bet he enjoyed it too because yeah. he's a guy with a sense of humor yeah and he's a no, decent no, no. man he's also. A, he, um, yeah he's a decent guy he's a top man and uh, we have a, I think we have a lot of respect for um, each other. We have socios who have been friends of the show for six years now. Brian Johnson is one, and you've given me the pathway into it. Brian says, as a Liverpool fan, I thought Olivier had a skill set which would have been perfect for us, Liverpool, mm -hmm. both complementing the front three but also an alternative to the front three in certain mm -hmm. games. He says, was there ever any interest from you to them or them to you? Well, uh, them to me, uh, I don't think so. But um, I have to say that obviously uh, Liverpool uh, have uh, an amazing, um, an amazing stadium, amazing fans, and what player, what player does uh, wouldn't wouldn't want to play for them? Um, they became uh, um, European Champions League winners. Uh, they won the league. Um, they've got a good, uh, great manager. Well, I, I, I felt I was so lucky, you know, because I realized my dream, my childhood dream, to play for Arsenal because I was an Arsenal supporter when I was young, and now I play for Milan. That um, that was um, also my club because um, I was a massive fan of Shevchenko, as I said uh, many times. Liverpool, I, I. I like Liverpool, uh, not like Arsenal, but I like Liverpool, but I believe uh, one more time uh, my destiny was to play for Arsenal and because Arsene Wenger bring me in like, and at that time Liverpool was not interesting. So they weren't, Richard, uh, pardon me, Brian, there's your answer, but there'll be some Liverpool Milan action coming this season, so yeah. good luck in that. <laughs> <coughs> Brian, watch out. Now this is a good one from a real friend of the show, Finlay MacDonald. He says, there are two goals I want to dissect mm -hmm. with Olivier, if possible. Mm -hmm. His delicious double one-two with Jack Wilshire for that wonderful team Norwich. goal against Norwich. Yeah. Yeah. How often did that kind of move come off in training? Well, uh, the Arsenal game is basically... Um Based on uh, movement, uh, playing one, two touch uh, with, uh, as uh, Arsene Wenger used to say, uh, with class, you know, and elegance. And it's true that this goal uh, is a perfect example of, uh, of that. Um, technically, in the right rhythm, you know, uh, everybody at uh, the right place at the right time, and the finishing also, like, ball back of the net from Jack was so important because maybe if he didn't score um, we wouldn't notice too much his goal. Um, was uh, delightful to play uh, at that time with players like Santi, Cazorla and Jack Wilshere who are involved also in, the, in, the, in, this, uh, in this goal. Um, well it was like basically just like that uh, feeling, um, if I can say, it was a situation that demanded um, to play one touch, to just to flick in like um, from the outside foot two times, mm. and uh, mm -hmm. well, everything was perfect. And you can see like no which players didn't really understand what's going on, you know. And uh, <laughs> it's it's very rare, but everything was was there, you know, uh, to make it amazing. Is, is there time to think, particularly in the last touch from you to Jack? Yeah. Or is it no, total it, it, it's total, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's um, the word uh, I, I wanted to say, it was just instinct, you know, and uh, it was, uh, yeah, basically full instinct. Then let me scratch an Like another goal, like another goal. Okay, okay, so fin 
Are we talking Finley, about the Scorpio? Uh, Olivier yeah. already knows you inside out. Eh? Yeah. So, okay, Finley said, and it wasn't the question I was going to ask you, but in the, in the so-called Scorpion goal, mm -hmm. and I'm a Scorpio, mm -hmm. so I love Scorpion goals. Okay. Did you think? Did you invent? Did you react? I uh, Describe your mind. I did react because the ball was behind me. I had to adapt to the situation. I did uh, invent, obviously, because uh, I was in a position like very unusual. You have to find a good balance. But obviously, it was purely instinctive. Uh, and uh, I, I, I couldn't say I wanted um, to put it uh, like crossbar on the crossbar and after it uh, in and make it even more beautiful, you know. But this, this goal, I have to say that I had 101% uh, of um, efficiency of luck, if I can say, because everything is, one more time, perfect. And I felt this night I was uh, touched by, by God's grace, basically. But also, that's, I, I did say it, and it's true, I, I did mean to do it. Um, after, obviously, uh, I was I was lucky at the end of the day. But okay, this is now this is where I've come alive. You've made me come. I'm Jack Wilshire for you yeah. now. Eh? Right. Who <clears throat> is Olivier Giroud? Because when you look at all your goals, and I've maybe seen sixty goals of yours mm -hmm. over the last day, two days, and there are moments when you you literally believe you can do anything because you, you, you're, you're quite tall mm -hmm. and, and reason and big physique, but your leap is very good. So sometimes when you go up, you're like Gull you're Gulliver looking at the little people and you're mm -hmm. like, as you go up, I can hear your mind going, mm -hmm. goodbye, little people. <laughs> sometimes when you shoot, mm -hmm. you feel, I don't know if it's conscious or subconscious, mm -hmm. but I look at you and it's clear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you shoot, you're, you, you, you know, I'm going to the top corner. Mm -hmm. The goalkeeper is not even going to sniff it. If he touches it, he's going to lose a finger. Mm -hmm. And then there's the third type. When fuck me, you, you finish as if you're Romario or Messi. <laughs> you fall over and you flick. Yeah. You put it between your legs. Know, There's a third type of goal where yeah. you suddenly go, now I'm an artiste mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But there are very few strikers that have those three things. Mm -hmm. Do you accept what I'm saying? Well, I take it, uh, yeah, with great pleasure. But analytically, do you accept what I mean? Yeah, 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 I understand. Um, th there's a few goals, uh, there are a few goals I scored uh, that I'm very proud of um, because in the execution, uh, it, it, you have to go fast, you have to go quick because you're in a box. But um, one of the things uh, which uh, is... Uh, um, characteristic of my game is I I don't really look I don't take the time to look at the goal before uh, I shoot and uh, most of my goals if you see are first touch when I can um, but yeah I've got in my head a few goals uh, I score for example with Arsenal against West Ham where I, I control from the left foot from a long ball and I finish right foot in between the legs of the keeper um, there's that goal against uh, Southampton semi-final uh, Eden Hazard gave me the ball that was the Messi's goal <laughs> and my friends told me oh we didn't <laughs> we didn't know you were able to do that I say yeah it's always nice to surprise <laughs> friends and people but yeah it was, it, was, it was yeah because it was one more time like instinct uh, I'm not really often in that position you know no. uh, where I have um, most of the time I, I receive crosses or I'm uh, back of the goal or it's very rare when I, I'm, in, I'm in the box. I know that if someone uh, touch me, um, it will be maybe a fall, but the, the players were a bit late. So I knew they're going to tackle. I knew that. and I, You anticipated I, where yeah, the balance yeah, was yeah, also. Yes, and uh, I knew they're going to try to counter uh, the ball. and. So that's why I've been uh, on the right and after on the left and, and almost couldn't score because the defender <laughs> make a foul. So I almost fall down. But So that's why it's quite unusual. I finish with the uh, outside of the, red, the right foot. Things never happened for me. <laughs> so yeah, it was one of my best memories also. I had my brothers in, uh, in, um, in Wembley. Super so cool. 
Well, yeah, I've, I've seen a video of someone uh, made, uh, he said, uh, well, when um, um, grandkids of Shiru, Shiru's grandkids uh, will see his goals, they will think he was uh, as good as Pelé or Maradona. It's a nice thing to it's, hear. It's a nice thing, thing to hear, you know, uh, it means uh, you score great goals. But, um, yeah. Maybe my memory is bad, but was there one for France against Australia? Uh, Austria or Australia? Uh, Aus Australia, but one against Sweden also. But, uh, but the one against Australia was a, was a back, uh, back pass, uh, cut back, and uh, the goal was there, and I, I was there, and I, I, find, I found a good balance to just chip it over the keeper. There's no angle and your balance put, is wrong. And to it, put, and to it put shouldn't your, be possible. To put your body uh, like, like that, to counterbalance, yeah. if I can say, because I know that I would uh, need um, to put it over the keeper. This is what I'm getting at. In your yeah, head, sometimes yeah, there's yeah. invention. No, because it's like a laboratory. Ping, 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 ping. I, um, at 14 years old, when I won the... the Coupe de France, right. if I can say, it was um, it, it was uh, uh, in Clairefontaine, okay, and um, I had a coach who told me, you have something um, at your age that other players don't have. It means it, it is you can see before the others, mm -hmm. and it, okay, I, I was not the only one, and after I just take it like okay, it's nice, but and after I just. Um, I, I just use it to 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 finish um, quicker the you know to have a better finishing and to to just um, finish well the work of the team as good as I can. You mentioned your brother. I don't know if it's the right thing to talk about Romain mm -hmm. because in in always believe you. I'm talking about uh, his uh, his um, échec. How do you say shake? Well, you, you use a phrase, yeah. a really troubling phrase, yeah. because here mm -hmm. I look at you still at 35, maybe you, mm -hmm. have, maybe you have five more years. <coughs> Success has been yours for the hard work. And you're at peace with yourself, you're happy, your life is good. But in the book you say, mm -hmm. my brother's failure yeah, pursues failure. me like a shadow holding me back. I'm scared the same thing will happen to me. Mm -hmm. Now, again, f this is a contrast for a man of faith, mm -hmm. a man who also is the main participant in his, in his life track. Mm -hmm. How can that fear of your brother's failure pursue you? That's unusual to say. It was, um, it was more uh, a family thing, uh, to be honest with you. Um, it, when you see your brother, who was a big hope of the French football, um, he had uh, 40 games uh, with uh, youth uh, national teams, with Titi Henry, with uh, David Trezeguet, Nicolas, Anelka. He was, Romain was a centre-back. Yeah, he was a centre-back. And um, to see all these guys uh, having amazing careers, and you... Um, Basically, you couldn't have the opportunity to, to, to realize your dream. Uh, I think it was so tough for, for him. And, uh, and for me also, when I grew up, um, it, was a, it, it was an example that there is so much cold, but not a lot of um, players picked up, like, I mean, to become so much uh, dreams... Uh, uh, broken, you know. Mm -hmm. So at that time, uh, when I was 15, Auxerre, so the same team my, fr my brothers uh, just started, and he, um, that's why uh, it was the same, uh, the same team who wanted to sign me. And uh, yeah, my parents said also, you will, uh, if you want to become a football player, yeah, but not in, in that club. So because it was too difficult for too them, painful. Too, too painful to. So it becomes it like again. almost like an inspiration for you to say, "For me, I understand this can yes, happen. Yes, but I must work hard, look after myself in order That's to." It. And and maybe, are you close enough that your Very. success can give him some compensation? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure. You know, uh, the um, 
when when obviously he sees me um, like being successful, uh, he's very proud and and obviously he take it like um, he's so happy and he's living it with me, you know. And it's that's my my most beautiful, um, you know, uh, thing um, to make him proud and happy, you know. And uh, I know that. Um, for him, it's finished all uh, all of these things, and there was um, a part of his life he didn't even want to to watch football anymore. But um, this is over, and now he's enjoying so much uh, um, with me, my career. You've done good. You've done a good thing in your life. Then you've done a very good thing in life. I'm yeah. sincere. Yeah. If you couldn't give and be altruistic, yeah, yeah. then you've done a good thing. We finished with three things. Can you please tell us about the legend of the bibs? Um, and particularly the legend of the bibs when you don't get a bib in the first game yeah. of the World Cup. Yeah. You handled it with total calm mm -hmm. and you were relaxed and you didn't get angry or No, <laughs> no that Sorry, was I told uh, some lies there. Yeah, yeah, you you lie. No, basically it was a tough moment. I have to explain the um environment of this first game uh, at the Mundial at the, the World Cup. I had uh, an injury um, here on my head. A big cut. So a, bi a big scar, yeah, a big cut, um, 10 uh, stitches with uh, Matt Miazga, who at that time uh, was also a Chelsea player. I just signed for Chelsea end of January, but he was on loan. Um, but yeah, the destiny was like, uh, like that. I just went with him. Uh, one week before the first game of the World Cup uh, duel with him, and he had maybe 15 st st staples. Stitches, staples, yeah, staples. No, like staples, yeah. Sta staples. Wow. Well, it was a big cut. It was, um, yeah, I had to get out of the pitch, and I was uh, very nervous uh, that uh, if I could play the first game of the World Cup or not. Then arrived the first game against Australia, and uh, the day before the game, yeah, um, Didier Deschamps uh, decided to change the the tactic of the of the team, and um, he decided to change um, uh, me uh, with uh, another player, and to to try something he never tried before. Like, kind of, uh, I was so surprised. Uh, I was obviously disappointed, but. I um, did swallow it um, at the end mm -hmm. uh, because I had to for the good of the team. But it's true that um, I was so unlucky because at that time, when the day before the game, uh, he didn't give me the bib. Um, you give it to Dembélé. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and um, I was training like, and I I on a duel, my. Uh, my scar, like my stitches, bro one of the stitches open up, and I had to, I had to, to finish. I had to get out of the, of the training because I was so angry, and also I was bleeding a, a, again, and I just uh, think which is very rare for me, but I, I lost my head a bit, and uh, for a second, and I just kick in uh, publicity. Um, like uh, an you know, panel, board. yeah, an advertising board, and uh, yeah, that was uh, me at that time. The reaction I had so frustration. But Didier uh, was myself. kind of cool. Like, uh, Didier was smart about it. Did he dish on? Yeah, because he he didn't lose his temper with you. He he counselled you. Well, yeah, 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 but. He's, 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 he's good in managing, you know, in communication with his uh, players. So he explained me the the night after, like the night before the game, after the training. He explained me his uh, his um, his choice. I um, I heard it. Uh, I swallow it, but yeah, I was I was touched also a little bit. And but maybe sometimes, you know, uh, it's nice to uh, after bounce back. I came on again in Australia and I almost give assist to, um, it was kind of assist for Paul and uh, I made the difference and after I didn't get out of the team until the end. Until you lifted the trophy. Yes. Now our sponsors, Pet 65, also asked a question, or at least I, I've suggested this topic. We have to be honest here because it's a beautiful song and mm -hmm. if you want to sing the Champs-Élysées version, that's, that's sure. good. But 
when people say, oh, Angola can't they? Does he cheat at cards? Because that's one of the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if yeah. it's not true, then it's very unfair. But if uh, it is true, then we need to know how. I'm, I'm, I have to say that I'm not the only one uh, to say that sometimes uh, if he can, uh, like, uh, contourner, I don't know what you say in English, but... Get around uh, Yeah, 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 get around uh, the... Um, the rules, the rules. He, will, he will do it. <laughs> <laughs> but he that's what winners it. do, I suppose. Yeah, 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 also, but he has to be sincere and uh, fair, like, to, to, to tell it, you know. <laughs> so if you do it and you're caught, then the world can sing about it. Because you. you wouldn't think that, yeah, Engolo does it. So, so that's why he made, uh, he made people, uh, some of the players, angry in national team, and they were so <laughs> angry against him, so that's why they created this. They made a beautiful song <laughs> yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all the other words are good, because yeah, he, for sure. Marqué, Messi. he stopped He stopped Leo Messi. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So, what brought you to play uh, Pétanque? And maybe for the audience you'll have to explain Pétanque. Pétanque. What brought you to play Pétanque at five in the morning? Yeah. Covered in Russian mud, <clears throat> and, and and how much of that night can you remember? Because we're talking about yeah, the I remember everything. Mm. Um, c'est vrai. We were yeah for sure c'est vrai. We were having a uh, like kind of celebration dinner uh, after the um, after the um, the final uh, with our families. Maybe four people of our families uh, allowed it to to come in our training camp in four, East four people each yeah yeah four people each sorry each player uh, my parents were there my wife and my uh, older um, daughter um, and yeah we had a good time obviously fun and after my parents went to bed my wife and my daughter also and we didn't really want to go to bed uh, with Hugo we've been to to swim in a kind of small uh, lake, not a lake, but um, une mare, like la mare à canard. Vous connaissez, it was the ducks, like it's, yeah, you had some... Like a like, little pond. Yeah, maybe something like that. I don't know an English word for that, but we've been uh, swimming and... A duck and pond? Yeah, yeah. Did you say mare à canard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a duck some, pond. A, a duck pond. A tiny uh, where the little yeah, ducks go floating around. Yeah, yeah, but... Oh. No ducks in Russia, but <laughs> basically when you when you step on the ground like inside the, the water, it was bah, disgusting. I don't know what was it, but it was, I, I, I believe, just for the, the nice atmosphere to have uh, some water like a small pond here and um, um, a terrain de pétanque, like uh, it's, a, it's a game we play in France, especially in south of France. Uh, the target is to, to reach a small ball with big, um, heavy a, balls. A metal ball, Yeah, metal right? ball, yeah. And uh, the one who, who is the closest uh, win the point, you know. It's very famous in France. Of course. Yeah. yeah some you don't also play, call yeah, it in the UK. Yeah, les boules, on joue aux boules. Ouais. Yeah, but if you translate in English, you are playing mm. balls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, we don't play it in Britain because it's too cold. But in Spain, they play it for a sure, lot. For eh? sure, for and sure, for sure. And I think maybe the Spanish are better than the French. I don't know, maybe, oh. there's, an, maybe there's another point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe the French, I accept this. But if you're covered in mud and, and duck droppings and yeah. water, then no. it must have been... So who, is, who are the long-lasters that night? Who are in the duck pond and who are playing pitonk, drunk and wet at five in the morning? Hugo Lloris and myself. <laughs> Only two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were playing two uh, against two uh, against... Um, um, Raf, I, I mentioned it in... Uh, in a, in a book, uh, Raf uh, is um, he was uh, our uh, kind of butler, you know, uh, and he was looking after us uh, like he was his top man, and um, Bash, Bashir, our kit man, also. So two v two. Yeah, two v two. How was the quality of the competition? No, at it was night? Well, it was okay. You know what? Yeah, it was okay. We were a bit drunk. Il avait livré ce pas. Oui, il y avait livré, bien sûr, bien sûr. So there was some drunkenness. Mais on a bien joué. On a bien joué quand même. Parce qu'on est français. Uh, okay, that's what, that's what the memory says. I get that. Um, and I suppose there's something I do want to ask you um, before we come to the last section. What's the strangest thing? that you've ever told Jean-Yves? 
Jean, Jean Yves is the guy. Os osteopath. The osteopath. Yeah. So most people don't tell secrets to their osteopath. Yeah. But uh, Jean Yves is your confidant. I mean, he's uh, he's a good uh, he's a good area. Like when you have uh, something uh, when something goes wrong, he. he Il a, c'est une bonne oreille, on dit en He's français. He's got a good listening ear. Good listening ear. Yeah. So you tell him serious things, important things? Yes, yeah, sometimes, yes, confidential things. <laughs> While he's also fixing your body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's multifunctional. I hope he has a, <laughs> Does he have a very big salary? <laughs> he should have a huge salary yeah, because... I hope so, yeah. No, he's a top man also. Then, um, what we're going to leave it with in terms of uh, always believe is where has been <coughs> the the moment um, for you where you have been at your most complete, your most powerful, because you won Montpellier's first title. Mm -hmm. You went to your dream club in Arsenal, played yeah. beautifully there mm -hmm. with a mixture of Frenchmen, some yeah. Spanish, for Germans. one of the great mm -hmm. Germans yeah. as well. Yeah, the big friendly giant yeah. is there. What a great yeah. man, now in charge yeah. of the academy. Another guest on this series. Okay. To, for one of the great French coaches. Then when you change sides, you go to the Europa League final and you say, yeah. Tom P, Arsenal, Tom P. Sorry. Nous avons gagné. And now you're at Milan, where Sheva played, and mm -hmm. also with your country as well as playing well in several mm -hmm. tournaments. You, mm -hmm. You've lifted the World Cup. Mm -hmm. I want to know the moment where Olivier Giroud is at his best, his most powerful, his yeah. happiest. Where was it and why? I don't know, but I, I can say I can say that I feel blessed when you just numerous like remind me the 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 career I had so far. Uh, it's amazing, and um, I have to say that my best best um, year, my best season, was 2016. After the just before the Euros um, Cup, uh, in terms of statistics, but um, I believe that uh, I was at my best uh, um, at the um, at the World Cup, at the World Cup, because uh, we we were so strong collectively. Um, that we were very difficult to play against, and uh, and you notice that I'm talking about collective because mm. uh, obviously football is a collective thing, and I believe you you can't win when you don't have a team cohesion and um, a, a big squad of friends, you know. And um, it's true that in 2018 we did create it, but <coughs> if I have to tell you. What was the best? When did I feel the best? Uh, is um, it would be maybe uh, after my career, because after my career I could enjoy what I did achieve in in my life, in my career, and uh, I would be I will be for sure very proud of of every single thing you just said. Well, I'm glad to have reminded you about them. Um, from now on, even more than before, I will always believe in Olivier Giroud. Um, I'm glad you did believe <laughs> too. People should know about Pitch Publishing, putting out the autobiography of Olivier Giroud. It's a good read. Mm -hmm. It's about a good guy. It's been nice talking to you about football. I've enjoyed it very much. Really I hope you have it. a fantastic season with the Rossoneri, mm -hmm. maybe even a win over Liverpool. Who knows? Why not? A Scudetto or no Scudetto? Ah, the Scudetto as well. Yeah, Por que no? <laughs> nice to have met you. Thank you for sharing the time with the big interview. Thank you. Olivia, merci. Thank you.